Hello everybody, this is Dandy with Key Smash Studios, and today we are going to show you how to get the Heretic run completed in Risk of Rain 2. So if you've played Risk of Rain, you'll see there are a lot of characters, but there's nobody named the Heretic. That doesn't exist here. Well, that's because the Heretic is a character that you can only find within the game. You have to transform into the Heretic. This is a tutorial to kind of show off what you can do to become the Heretic, uh, the easiest way to do it, and how you can kind of build the Heretic to to not have a terrible run. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, in my opinion, is start as Captain. The reason that I think Captain is a solid start for Heretic is because of the defensive microbots passive uh, starting item. When you transform into the Heretic, this item is one of the only things that will maintain. All of your abilities are changed, but you will maintain your defensive microbots, so it pays to carry over a perk. The loadout can be whatever you want it to be. I'm just gonna run kind of some simple stuff. Another very important thing is if you can get the artifact of man that would be the best. Being able to choose your items will help you craft a run with the heretic that doesn't make you want to cry because this run can be very, very tedious. I'm going to run the artifact of command and then the artifact of swarms just so I kill more enemies and can move through the stage a little more quickly. Finally, you will see that I am going to play on drizzle. That is because I am a baby back bitch. All right, so right out of the pod, you'll want to start obviously killing things to gather items, but what items are good on a character like Heretic? One important thing to note is that Heretic loses health constantly as it is alive, as it exists. So you're going to want items to counter that effect. Now, one of the better things that you can do is get three cautious slugs. Three cautious slugs, when they are active, will counteract the uh, health loss that you'll be suffering from as Heretic. So as you progress through the levels, if you have the artifact on, of command on, make sure at some point that you grab those three cautious slugs because again those are going to be super duper helpful in uh preventing you from dying by just standing still this can also be counteracted with a good amount of life steal and uh other items that prevent you from taking damage however i do not believe that tougher times the teddy bear will prevent that damage from procking i i believe that damage is guaranteed regardless of item set uh but it can be fought against, I guess, for ta lack of a better term, by having the uh, several cautious slugs. So I'm going to go ahead, well, this is a green item, so I'm going to get a hapu feather, or a wax quail, pardon. Okay, so the reason I took a wax quail there is because the wax quail works really well with uh, one of the passive perks of being the heretic, and that's that uh, you get three jumps. So the wax quail allows you to jump three times. Uh, and dash three times. It is wonderful for speeding around the map or for escaping a dangerous situation. Another good item, if you're looking for active items for this character, is the wood sprite. Healing over time is a wonderful thing that helps you kind of survive the heretic run, especially if you're playing on some of the harder difficulties like Monsoon to try to unlock their, uh, their log in the book. Having that uh, additional healing is going to mean a whole lot. All right, so you will see that I have just collected my third cautious slug. That's going to help prevent me from slowly dying due to the passive health loss that the heretic is subjected to for being a heretic. So once you have this item, you can kind of start focusing whatever builds you'd want to run. The heretic is flexible, although you are forced to have the eyes of heresy lunar item, meaning that you will not be, you, your basic attack is going to be that. So it's, it's very slow and getting proc may very well benefit you. You're also going to want to make sure that you stack armor piercing rounds. Armor piercing rounds are insanely helpful for getting you through that final boss and through teleporter stages. So make sure when you get the chance after you have your three cautious slugs out of the way that you uh, start building yourself some armor piercing rounds. Really uh, seal the deal for getting through that final boss stage. All right, so you'll see that I've climbed all the way up to the top of the pillar here in this map. That's because I know that there is a newt altar spawn. I'm gonna purchase that so that I can get to the shop, the lunar item shop, as quickly as possible. The lunar item shop is how you are going to become the heretic. You do not have to get a newt altar on the very first stage, and it might benefit you not to if you haven't been able to get items. As gold items go, uh, honestly, I think it's going to be a good idea to grab anything that provides damage since we're probably going to be going a proc build after we finish turning into the heretic i'm just going to go ahead and get me a charged perforator because that lightning does a lot of damage Whee! all right get your credit card number ready and the three funky digits on the back because we are in the card shop and as you can see each one of these items is 
you know, it's a standard item. Some of them are the same, but because the Artifact of Command is on, we kind of get to do what we want. And we need four items, four very specific items. The first item that we're going to need to get is the Visions of Heresy. The Vision of Heresy replaces your basic attack with uh, this 12 fire thing. Second item we're going to be looking for is called the Hooks of Heresy. That's gonna be this bad boy right here. The Hooks of Heresy replace your secondary uh, skill and give you uh, kind of this big slice that you can hold down and send forward. It is a cool ability. The third item we're gonna be looking for is called the Essence of Heresy, kind of these entrail looking blue things right here. The Essence of Heresy replaces your special skill with something called Ruin, doesn't really do anything. That's kind of one of the unfortunate parts. And finally, and actually, this looks like the item that we would need, but we're gonna pop it off and select it anyway. We're going to be getting the Strides of Heresy, and that's this bird talent looking thing right here. And once you do that, you will have transformed into the mighty Heretic. So the Heretic is a special character and its abilities are all derived from those items we just picked up. So it has the 12 shot burst, your, uh, Secondary attack is this kind of whirlwind slash, and then when you hit shift, you turn into a, a portal that can hover around and fly and is untargetable. Uh, one of the things that comes with the heretic, your, I, I think I mentioned this earlier, but your art does nothing but make you squawk. Uh, you can actually detonate blight with it, which blight is applied uh, by some of my attacks, but we'll get into that later when we're fighting enemies. The only other addition is that the heretic naturally has three jumps before you would use your hapu feather. Meaning, if you have a wax pigeon, or a, yeah, whatever it's called, the wax quail, wax pigeon. If you have a wax quail, you get to spam that three times, allowing you to jump further. All right, so the blight system works like this. I'll hit this enemy a few times, and once that pops, you'll see he has three stacks of blight. If I hit R, it'll execute those stacks of blight and deal a wonderful amount of damage to the enemy. All right, so you'll see that as I start getting items, I'm going to be focusing in the green area on getting items that help my proc chance, because only being able to attack these 12 times with a couple seconds delay really does make it hard to handle large droves of enemies later on, especially since these auto attacks can miss despite their track nature. That being said, if you can start building items that cause AoE damage, it'll help you in your run a whole lot, especially on the final level before the boss. So I'm going, I already have a ukulele, I'm going to grab a Willow the Wisp for any of those enemies that stack up real bad. All right, so let's get into our first boss fight as the Heretic. Honestly, again, I'm playing on Drizzle, so this shouldn't be very hard. This is just to give you an idea of how this character plays. So you're gonna wanna use your mouse too to throw your ability through bosses as often as possible. And once you get that stack damage, make sure to execute using your R. It deals so much damage, especially if you have armor piercing rounds, you are really just going to dominate bosses by making sure you bla uh, stack Blight and then throw that ability. And it's super useful too. And you can see my proc damage at work too. Because of the lightning bolt I gathered, because of the ukulele and the uh, will o' the wisp, uh, I, it, my 12 projectiles are really doing all the extra work they can for me and it's helping so much. It also pays off to have these drones that are empowered by my robot, keeps them alive longer and allows you to help survive easier and increases your odds of beating the boss, which on, on Drizzle you don't need as much. On Monsoon, you are definitely going to need and it is something that I benefit from greatly while doing so. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go and get myself a little disciple. Because I have limited basic attacks, having an item that can be outputting damage if I am forced to go on the run to try to get my uh, slugs to proc will be very useful because it'll make sure that I am maintaining damage output even in a scenario where I am not able to actively fight. So I built myself four energy drinks. You'll see that I'm kind of jumping in the movement speed direction. And that's just because, again, it's always better to have a way out. With this character naturally losing life anyway, it doesn't take a lot to persuade uh, the heretic to become very low on health very quickly. I wanna make sure that if shit starts to hit the fan, I can sprint and make my way out of that scenario as quickly as possible. So uh, I think four will be enough for now. I'm gonna go back to building crit glasses for the sake of making sure that uh, all of my hits deal more damage and it'll help me get through some of the tougher enemies we face later in the run. Now Dandy, you might be asking yourself, I've played this game before, I've stomped on Mythrix a time or two, and if I recall, during the last phase of his fight, he takes all of your items away. Uh, because the Heretic is created by 
buying four lunar items or collecting four lunar items, wouldn't I be returned to my normal phase uh, after fighting through the first two stages of Mithrix? Is that going to ruin my run? It's not going to happen. Because of the way this character was designed and specifically implemented for this challenge, you're not going to lose the items that turn you into the heretic. You will remain in this form. The downside is, and this is worth noting, you really want to rush to get your items back. Since he takes away your items, you're going to lose a lot of that base healing and a lot of that survivability that you tried to work in this character early on in your run. Losing that puts you at a much greater risk of decaying because of the health loss passive. So, when you get to that stage of Mithrix, be careful, be cautious not to let him blitz you, but be aggressive enough that you're going to get your items back before you decay naturally. One thing that you'll notice is I don't even have to really fight right here because I got the little disciple. I'm running around at maximum chicken speed. The little disciple is firing off all these little orbs that are activating the proc that I built. So uh, the ukulele, the will o' the wisp, my rocket pack. It's activating all of those, and all I need to do is run around. These uh, rockets or projectiles are also capable of critting, so a lot of these enemies spawning or dying right away. On Monsoon, it won't be that easy, but it, again, this item is just super useful for uh, you focusing on maintaining safety while still being able to dish out some damage. So I am going to actually get a scythe now that I'm getting closer to having my full crit. Uh, it's all 10 of my crit glasses built. Uh, that extra bit of health will just help if I get blitzed and can't passively regenerate it all between my active item and my three cautious slugs. One thing that you'll notice I'm not building very much of while I go through and collect items is attack speed. Because you are limited to the 12 attacks that you have, building attack speed is a little bit of a waste on this character. Another item that you might want to start picking up on as you play through this are backup magazines. Because of your limited number of attacks, it never hurts to have more abilities at your disposal, and a backup magazine will help a ton with that. As you can see, I've been here a long time if you're paying attention to the timestamp. That's because I wanted the guaranteed red item chest. Now there are a lot of things you can get out of this, and unfortunately the one I'm getting doesn't help with the boss as much, but boss damage isn't as big a deal to me as being able to consistently clear ads. So I'm going to go with uh, an item I used to sleep on, the Ceremonial Dagger. The Ceremonial Dagger, when you kill enemies, spawns these awesome floating daggers like you can see here that will immediately spaz out attempts to chase down any living enemy that it can sense and it procs your effects as well so they're super super great for uh, a character that doesn't have as many attacks that they can throw around because if more enemies are spawning and getting killed by those daggers you're essentially fueling a kill feed that you don't have to even participate in Oh, hey, look, Magma Worm. All right, just a tidbit to comment on something that I mentioned earlier. I said that the Artifact of Command is almost a necessity for this run so that you can choose your build and get yourself the correct Lunar items. You will find that down here. At the bottom, uh, you'll see that hole um, in pretty much every version of this map. It'll always be different a little bit. But uh, you want to get to this giant Artifact Shrine. And kind of a fun fact I can share is that this Artifact Shrine was how you collected the Artifacts in Risk of Rain 1, which I have recently gotten into. And if you'll pay attention, you'll also see that there are a bunch of these vines hanging down. The only way to move up and down platforms in uh, Risk of Rain 1 was actually to climb vines very much like these. So this whole area is kind of a homage to Risk of Rain 1 in a way, or it has a lot of little tidbits. And I'm sure those are spread through all of the maps, but that's one of the areas that I always uh, see it the most after having played both games. Another item I just grabbed is the Death Mark. Uh, not a necessity, but it can be helpful because you apply your own, uh, you apply Blight with just your basic attacks and you have so many other things going. If you do want to pick up one of those items uh, along with some other Brock items, it can help. Do you fear death, Jack Sparrow? Hmm chicken. Just a pro tip, if Glass Pillar ever spawns back here, you can definitely do this one. It's so much easier than the other ones. A lot less spawns out here. Having this much speed is never a bad thing because being able to dash away from his abilities like that, dash away from those really quick swings that he does, can be super handy. Charge up a mouse too, try to get it in there as soon as I can. That'll stack Blight, I can use Blight and deal a hearty amount of damage. And anytime they jump too, try to do that. Try to prepare a mouse too 
to hit as soon as they land because you can really chunk them if you built boss damage. For this attack, I recommend always staying in the air. Uh, yeah, you, you can shift around left and right really easily on this character. So now that we're in the final phase, I'm going to waddle off before I lose my items. You can see I am drastically losing my health. You maintain your active items, so I was able to keep a good bit of it. But you really, like for this fight, just stay back behind a wall, throw your abilities out, really watch for these to circle around, utilize the multiple jumps that come native to this character, throw those abilities, and then just proc the Blight as much as you can. You can see that once you start getting your items back, especially with being able to proc Blight, you're going to melt these guys really quickly. And from that point forward, it's just survive the final stage. Honestly, this is, I think, where movement speed comes in handy the most. So you'll see all the portals spawn, choose a low one, and dash through it. Our ship is over there. I have a ton of Hapu feathers, so I can pretty much go from this platform to the roof of the ship, hopefully. Uh, one jump short. There we go. The run's complete, actually. I finished with Heretic. You won't get the achievement on Drizzle, obviously, or the challenge progression, the logbook entry. You have to do it on Monsoon. That's where the challenge is. And if this isn't good enough for some of y'all, I would be happy to re-record on Monsoon and show myself getting a victory to show what it looks like in that environment. I just wanted to run a tutorial on my suggested build and how I personally chose to unlock Heretic using the command artifact. But yeah, this is kind of the way that you do it. Uh, this is a very difficult challenge, a very cool challenge that they implemented relatively recently in one of the many great updates they've made to this game. And it was a thrill learning how to do it, learning builds for that specific character and uh, beating. And so they left bitterly avenged and deeply lost. Of course, because there are no happy endings, only bittersweet or maybe happy endings. Either way, this has been the Risk of Rain 2, how to play Heretic, how to unlock Heretic, and how to build Heretic endgame. If you liked what you saw here, please like and comment. We really appreciate it, and subscribe if you get the chance. It's free, and you can always unsubscribe later if you don't like what you see. But yeah, if again, if you'd like for me to retry this in Monsoon, I can definitely take a crack at it. Obviously, there's no guaranteed win each time. It depends on item drops and spawns, but I have kind of my own method that I would have employed in Monsoon. And it's essentially the same as what I showed you here. It just varies slightly based off of artifact use. Regardless, thank y'all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, hope I helped you out, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye everyone.